Go ahead. Well, hello, class. For those of you in Pennsylvania, we're here in New York City today, and we are in this beautiful and historic building, the Riverside Church, and we just got a wonderful tour from Ms. Rosetta Ferguson. Hello, students, and, scholars. And she's telling us about the history that we're studying in class. I'm also happy to have Dr. Olmert with us. Hi there. And uh, we uh, learned that Dr. Martin Luther King was here, and he gave an historic speech explaining what he called why I opposed the war in Vietnam. So can you just give us a little background of Dr. King's visit that day? Dr. King was invited to speak during the, in the 60s, and he came to speak. There was a group called the Concerned uh, Clergy Against the War, and he was invited to speak against a lot of um, opposition. In fact, many in the black community did not want him to speak. To make, In fact, no one wanted him to, to delve into the war issue because they felt we were, at that time there was a lot going on with the civil rights movement, but he chose to step out and make this, um, make this statement about the war. And that was a historic moment, not only for New York City, for the church, but for basically the world. And he decided to do it here? He decided to do it here and because did they know what of, he was going to say. Well before? really he didn't want to he had there was there was something he had thought about going down to the UN mm -hmm. to do it. But again there was a lot of he faced a lot of uh, controversy, a lot of opposition. They didn't want him to do it anywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but he was invited by the concerned um, lay group here, and that, that was the main issue. So he came to speak in front of um, for this group. That's why he was able to do it here. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, I don't know where he would have done it. Would have done it all. Mm -hmm. Dr. Alton, you teach uh, this period on Vietnam. Right. Yeah. Uh, can you give us some context of that? Sure, the war in Vietnam had been going on uh, under various nationalities since the late 1940s, the end of World War II. Basically, Ho Chi Minh, nationalist and communist, have been fighting to drive the French out of Vietnam. Um, we have been supporting the French in trying to fight Ho Chi Minh. When, uh, when the French gave up, American administrations began to step in supporting the new government of South Vietnam, which was non-communist. Uh, the Ho Chi Minh's communists got the North um, in a temporary basis. And then uh, American involvement kept increasing. Early 1960s, John F. Kennedy increased our involvement with advisors. Um, he was assassinated. His successor, Lyndon Johnson, who was a great friend of the civil rights movement, great supporter of it, also uh, increased and escalated the war in Vietnam. By 1965, sent direct American soldiers there, several hundred thousand, to fight the war directly in South Vietnam against the communist guerrillas. And uh, Martin Luther King uh, felt that uh, this was the wrong thing to do. It would be uh, destructive and, uh, and futile and uh, decided to make a statement against the war despite the fact that uh, he was receiving great support for the civil rights agenda from Lyndon Johnson, President Johnson. So it was quite a risk. He was actually flying in the face of, uh, of the president who was supporting the civil rights movement uh, by announcing his opposition to one of Johnson's signatures foreign policy adventures which was the war in Vietnam. So this caused a great breach between uh, King and Johnson, um, which was partly what the other civil rights leaders were afraid might happen in. King gave a speech like that, and it did happen, but he proceeded anyway. Yeah. The thing I would add to the students, uh, that this was maybe one of Kareem, Martin Luther King's most courageous moments, although his 1963 speech in Washington uh, at the Lincoln Memorial is more celebrated, this one came at greater cost to himself, at greater risk. Uh, as was pointed out, everyone uh, felt that because President Johnson had been so supportive of civil rights, having signed the Civil Rights Act of 1964, the Voting Rights Act of 1965, that black people were obligated to support him, also as a Democrat, because they didn't have to say they would agree with the war, but not to criticize it publicly. And so when King felt the urge, not only the, really the, the um, need uh, on principle, and that's why it's appropriate, I think, that he did it at a church rather than a political venue, because as he explains in that speech, that um, injustice anywhere is a affects justice everywhere, and you can't just re restrict yourself to civil rights of black people in America and not care about what's going on in Southeast Asia, what's going on in Africa, what's going on in Europe, what's going on in Latin America. And if you are committed to nonviolence, as King was, 
then you have to oppose war. And so to say, I, I believe in nonviolence, but I support a war, uh, was a contradiction of ideals. And so King really laid out in a methodical way, and I encourage those of you in the class to read the speech uh, or to uh, look it up and listen to it, which was recorded uh, here. Uh, and you'll see that King had a great knowledge, goes through the history and the rationale uh, for why he took that courageous uh, position. So again, hope you're enjoying the course. And if you're ever in New York, I encourage you to, on your own, come and visit the Riverside Church. Thank you very much.